Today we're painting Winter Dawn. Hey guys, Deirdre here, All Things Art and Books, how you doing? So today uh, you'll see a time lapse of me painting this painting. It's in all in watercolour and a little bit of gouache. And also a little bit of white gel pen at the end. It was mainly intuitive. I didn't really know what I was going to paint, but I had been influenced by this painting that I did the last time, which was Forest Dawn. Kind of going with that thing, but I still didn't really know what I was going to paint. And I just started off dropping colours in, as you'll see in the time lapse, and then started to add the mountains. Now, once I got the mountains in, I was actually a wee bit stuck as what to put into the bottom here. I toyed with all kinds of different ideas. In the end, I got this uh, reference photo for a snow leopard on Pixabay. So that's where the reference for the snow leopard came from. The rest is completely out of my imagination. I've got no idea. It just, just came out. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the time lapse for this. And I've entitled it Winter Dawn because it's a snow leopard in the snow in the mountains. So, so I hope you enjoy it, guys. Okay, so I'm just soaking the page here before I start to drop colour in. With this particular piece, I wanted to try to keep the colours very, very subtle. In the picture that I did with the fox, I tended to lose a little bit of that subtle colour and I really, really want to concentrate on getting that this time. I didn't know what I was doing. I started to put in some mountains here just to see how it would go, working back to front and just putting in some very pale colours to look, make it look like a landscape in the background. Putting in a second layer here and starting to define a little bit of shadows in the mountains to make them look more three-dimensional. And again, just working back to front. Don't worry too much about exact colours. I mean, obviously you want colours that will complement each other, but getting an exact colour isn't the be all and end all. It's really more about getting your values correct um, in order to make things look more three dimensional. Here I'm just sketching in a brief outline of the snow leopard that I've decided to put in at this stage. Then because I'd already put the base layers down in watercolour, I had to start off with the white gouache. If I'd known I was doing the snow leopard at the very, very beginning of this piece, I would have masked that area out. But because it was completely intuitive at the start and I didn't know what I was going to put in, I just decided I have to go in with the white gouache. And that's why I went in with that so um, early on because it, it, the white gouache was the only thing that was going to cover over those darker colours, but that was fine. It's just sometimes you just got to do that. And I, I loved working on a white gouache anyway. So now that I've got a first layer down of that gouache, I can start to put more tones in and putting the spots in where I want them just as a guide and then going over with some mid-tones and building up the layers in the fur. I'm not too worried about it being detailed at the minute as long as I've got shadows and highlights in the right place and, and the brush strokes going in the right direction and the right length to signify fur. That's all I'm worried about at this stage. And with watercolour, it's still a layer in process. I mean, people think of layer in paint mainly with oils and with acrylics. 
then they tend to think there's a limit on the number of layers that you can get in watercolour and that's true there is a limit there's only so much before it turns to mud but you can layer much more than you think and just keep on layering and layering and layering because it's only through the layers that you get the details and as I say it's building up the layers that you start to see actually the details coming through without you actually mentally putting them in which is a weird thing to say I know but you start to see the details appearing and then you go with them and you see a little shadow appearing and you deepen it and you see a highlight appearing and you lighten it and gradually it becomes more realistic. Now at this stage I noticed that I hadn't actually got the snow leopards, it's, it's like a ruff around his neck, like a mane sort of under his chin and it wasn't quite right. I had done the fur too long at that point and I realised I had to correct it. So if you see that kind of thing happening, don't panic. Most of the time it can always be corrected and that's what I went on and I did. So I deepened some shadows, I shortened some highlights and eventually I got it looking more like the reference photo and more like the way I wanted it. I've just slowed down the video here at this point to let you see again just how slow a process it is. I'm actually putting some of the whiskers in at this stage uh, just to let you see how, how detailed and how, how slow you actually go and it's all a matter of patience and just taking your time and enjoying the process. Painting isn't just getting to the end of the piece, it's amazing when we do but you just enjoy the whole process. At this stage I'm really tidying it up. I'm looking for those little details that I can put in and just bringing the whole thing together. I'm deepening the edges of the paint in here, adding a little purple pink. It's actually, I think it's quinacridone magenta is the colour I'm using there. Just into the corner of the leopard to bring the whole picture together but I'm really really scared of darkening it too much. I really want to preserve the subtle colours in this piece. I splash some white goo ash over the whole piece to indicate snow and then I'm just making that snow even brighter by going over it with gel pen and we're almost done. And see you again next week.